Hello and welcome back to this week's video and in this week's video as you can tell the sun's shining perfect time to do a pond update. It's not the best pond update because we've still got the string algae problem and if you didn't see the last pond update we still had it then and it has got worse so as you know you feed the fish a lot more, a lot less if any through the winter so I've not fed the fish for a couple of months now uh, but the water temperature is still absolutely freezing so I st I'm still not feeding them and that should help the string algae as well because there's less stuff for it to feed on uh, but I've got the proper string algae treatment this time in this video and we're just going to do a full maintenance clean on the pond as I talk to you about my future ponds with this pond and another pond I am also building so let's jump into starting cleaning it So here we've got some mega stuff to start treating this string algae and I'm going to have to put this in near enough weekly to get rid of it for summer because in summer I've got some good plans to do with this pond I'm getting loads more koi and I'm going to make it look a lot nicer So the first thing I'm going to do is get these in and then start taking out all the algae that's floating around by my hand So for the first one, this one is the green water clarifier The water is a bit murky but it's not too bad but the other ones will do a lot more but you have to add 500 millilitres of this per 10,000 litres, so I'll add about uh, 75 to 100 millilitres. So this is 50 going in. And then 100 mil of this one. Then 20 mil of this. Uh, oxygen booster just scattered across the surface of the pond. Right, so they've now settled in the water and I've left them for about 10 20 minutes. We've got a carry bag and I'm just going to get as much loose algae as I can out uh, just so the treatment doesn't have to do all the work and it's getting a bit of a healthy hand. So let's start grabbing some out. So now I've got most of the algae out, I'll show you how much of that bag it filled up in a minute. Uh, so the majority of it is out now, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start draining the pond, just do a little water change. You don't want to do big water changes if you've got a string algae problem, but I do need to do one as the filter is very dirty. So I'm just going to sit here for a minute, spinning this on the filter because it's one of the wine filters that you have to clean. And uh, yeah, I'll see you after this. And as I can tell from the pressure the water's coming out, the pump has got shed tons of string algae in it. So after I've done this, I'll get the pump out and I'll give that a clean as well. So we'll turn it back on now, the pump's clean. <sighs> My hands are numb, I can't even click the switch. I'm going to spin this a bit more now, there's more pressure. And swap it over to the main pump. And all I really need to do now is get a sponge and clean this blade out. So I'll get a sponge now. Better than a sponge, I've got a hard bristled brush, so we'll get this nice and clean now. Now when the pond's cleared up from the filter, it will start clearing up and again put that treatment in once a week. So we get rid of this string algae as fast as we can, but this bag is literally half full of string algae. So that was not good. I've got rid of most of it now. There's literally only a tiny bit left just on all the walls, but not thick clumps. So the fish couldn't get stuck in them. The fish couldn't get stuck in it anyway. Koi don't usually, but Steve the sturgeon, he does get stuck in it sometimes, but there's not enough for him to now get stuck. Uh, but what my future plans are with this pond, in the summer I'm going to get a few placos for it because as you know, if you know anything about fish tanks or ponds, placo are warm water fish so they like the water about 15 degrees plus really. And I could get a heater on this pond which I might do uh, so I can keep the placos in next winter but the pond that I'm building up my dad's, I've got some awesome plans for that so let's quickly do a mega transition and teleport up my dad's. And here we are. Up my dad's and this is where the new pond is going to be. So there's a slated area here, my dad said I can do what I want with it and play around so this will be fun. Let's measure it and see how big we can have it. 
so there's decking and there's a slab, uh, the pebbled area, so I'm going to go flush with the decking. So I'm literally going to go from these slabs here, all the way down across the front of the decking, to the other side where there is another slab. So we're looking about 350 centimeters length, so 3.5 meters, which is 11, 11 and a half foot. So that's a good size. So that's length. Let's look at width. And then for width, we're looking about 190 centimeters. So 350 by 190 centimeters wide and length. And then I'll be digging two or three foot down, probably two, no, probably three foot down, and then two cinder blocks coming out of the ground from there. So it'll be about five foot deep altogether, which is a mega depth. And there's something even more excited about this pond. Apart from that, it's going to be absolutely huge. I haven't worked out how many uh, gallons or liters it's going to be yet, but I will work it out and put it on the screen now. So yeah, you can see it's going to be big. And uh, the most exciting thing about this pond hasn't even been said yet. So. Traditional ponds in the UK, you see koi, see some goldfish, some maybe some orfs, maybe some tench, cool stuff like that. Maybe sturgeon, which are really cool. But this pond, this game, this is going to be special pond. So I am going to get a huge, like three kilowatts the heater on this pond and gain have a mega filter on it and gain have a mega bottom drain system on it so I'm going for a bottom drain system and if anyone knows where to get a solid uh, the best recommendations for a bottom drain or a, a good filter I found the heater already but bottom drain and good filter let me know down in the comments you've seen how big it is so you need so you know how much it needs to basically be how big the so you know how big the filter needs to be so I can find one if no one can help, but it's always good to hear from other people and other people's perspective as well. So this pond is going to be heated, so it's going to stay around 20 degrees all year round, which means I can have some cool fish in this pond. So some of you might know someone called Paul Caffaro, and I've watched him for years, and I absolutely love his videos, and he's made some awesome ponds in his days. Uh, and he made a 4,000 gallon pond outside of his house, uh, that he did once and I watched that whole episode all the, like, the way through it him adding fish to it and he lives in Florida so we can have some mega fish in it so he's got largemouth bass, peacock bass, tiger shovel nose, red tail catfish, uh, tiger shovel nose, red tail catfish hybrids he's got oscars in there he's got loads of cool stuff like that and that means if I keep this pond at 20 degrees all year round I can do the same so this will be exciting. I can get so many cool species that I don't. I haven't seen anyone else in the UK with an outdoor pond with these cool species in. So if I can pull this off, it will be mega. But it's going to cost a lot to run and it's going to cost a lot to make. So make sure you go down below and subscribe. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're going to get some mega fish, mega footage, and I'll do loads of videos on this pond after I've stopped playing with the tape measure. Put it down now. So we get loads of mega footage, loads of different cool videos on this pond. And it's going to be absolutely awesome. It's going to bring loads of a new audience to the videos. Uh, we can name the fish, we can hand feed them, because most of these fish will eat other fish. So I'll go to the shop, for example, get like a big case of tilapia. And I'll probably get some live tilapia and make a little breeding pond or a little puddle, for example, near it. And I'll try to grow and make my own tilapia to feed these fish, because that's what they would usually eat in the wild where they live technically because they are invasive where they live but they are everywhere there uh, but yeah that's my plan it's going to be a huge pond it's going to be a mega build but it's going to be expensive so I need your guys help just make sure you go down below like this post like this video subscribe it helps me out a lot so yeah the next update you'll see on this pond here will be when I'm digging it and like putting the cement base at the bottom so that will probably be mid to the end of Feb, maybe beginning of March. So that's when it's going to start. I'm going to start saving up my money, start getting everything I need to get for it. And yeah, it is going to be good. So stay tuned. And yeah, it is going to be good. So thanks for watching this week's video. And I am back to posting weekly now finally. This week's video was supposed to be a video of me doing showing you everything that I got for Christmas cart fishing wise so yeah silly no over it forgot to plug the mic properly so the mic was half in half ounce uh, so the whole video is just static noises while well, I did a full video when I went fishing and I also did a session with Matt Catches 
uh, proper sound guy but the whole video there as well I don't know what was up with my mic that week but I fixed it now anyway I did go fishing with Matt and the, his link will be down in the description below and it was a mega session but if you want to see that session because I did not plug my mic in or sort my mic out properly so the whole video is gone for me but if you want to see that session head over to Matt's channel it's a mega session and we just went on Morton Fisheries and I'm sure we'll get on the bank very soon but this seems fun Matt if you're watching maybe even come out with this in the summer will be a big hand but yeah so we're going to have cinder blocks coming out the ground and down to the floor we're going to have thick thick insulation boards to keep the heat in so it, we don't need to run that heater as much because it's going to cost a lot to run uh, and yeah it's going to have a good filter I'm going to work out how many litres it is after this find a good filter but if anyone else got good suggestions let us know so that will be it for this week's video it is all exciting and I can't wait to do this so thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in next week's video.